Thank you, Andrew. Right, uh, the the my clock turned eleven just as you were winding it up. You you are a, a true Faithways professional at this point. Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm trying to uh, mess around with all my little screens here, so please excuse me if I look uh, completely lost. It's only because I am so. Um, but great to see everybody and. Uh, on this snowy day, we're getting weather reports from all over the country, which we always do. Um, uh, and anyway, so uh, I thought I would start with uh, an opening prayer that uh, that you are probably familiar with, at least on the front end, but it's rarely prayed all the way through. And it, it's a prayer. Um, uh, the serenity prayer that that undoubted that we've I know used many times on faithways and it was actually written by a theologian Reinhold Niebuhr who um, was a great German theologian he was in New York City most of his teaching career um, but he also he he made uh, he, his famous response to the question um, it, uh, how what do I, what does it mean uh, to be a Christian? He, his response, and he was a very sort of, you know, heady guy. Uh, he said, uh, it is, uh, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Um, which, which uh, particularly from him, uh, is just a, a wonderfully innocent um, answer. But so I thought I would uh, begin us with, uh, with a serenity prayer uh, all the way through. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Amen. Are you churched or are you unchurched? Are you a seeker or are you a cynic? Are you a sinner or are you a saint? Are you gay, straight or otherwise, rich or poor, healthy or sick? lost or found if you answered yes to any of this you are welcome here let us practice faith ways together lance i think you've got the sacred space thank you chris oh it's just such a joy to get up and um uh to try to get it all together and then you know Right now, I have three devices working at the same time, and we're trying to get Barbara's device working, so it's, it's always a little challenging, but it's fun, and it's really not, I, I still I just love it, I enjoy it, but it, it can be messy, so I see our flower just fell over, but um, good morning, everybody, and um, I just, before we get too far into it, I wanted to say that there's a couple people that wanted me to let you know that they will miss us today, and one is my brother, John. And John is, has been invited to go to a church to um, talk about poverty in Tacoma. And so um, prayers for John and, and the work that he's doing. And um, also for Karen, uh, who is in Florida with her family. And Karen and her family are down uh, helping her mother move. And I, I just got a message that they are um, going and attending her mother's, uh, you know, uh, Wall Church in Florida, but she wanted to uh, 
send her best to everyone. And, and of course, uh, but it's so great to see everyone. So today I'm going to light this candle and, um, you know, I think uh, that we light it in the, in the midst of sort of a lot of sort of messiness, whether it's messiness in our lives, messiness with the weather, messiness in the news, whatever it is, let this uh, light bring us some peace and may it be Christ peace. One more. Thank you, Lance. Um, so, you know, one of the things that uh, I'm aware of is, and, you know, as we get used to faith ways, um, uh, uh, there's a, we have a chance <clears throat> to realize that the two dimensions that we see on the screen, you know, all these little squares that are us, um, uh, are three dimensions. And uh, th that third dimension is the heart. Um, that third dimension is, is who we are. And that third dimension needs to know, and we all need to know this, that we really depend upon one another to give, to give the whole community the, the fullness of the experience of, of gathering for an hour. And, um, and one, one way to do that is to simply check in. Um, to uh, let uh, the whole community know anything that's significant in your life. It can be anything from, you know, something that happened this morning to, to something that, you know, a burden that you're carrying that we need to carry together, a joy that, uh, that just uh, came out of nowhere. Um, anything that, uh, that you offer at this time of check-in um, enriches uh, the whole community. And so um, with that, I just invite anybody who'd like to, to just uh, uh, check in with us and, and give voice to, to your square for the benefit of everybody. Christina. So I finally started seeing a doctor. I've had um, blood tests and um, they checked my bones and it seems that I have a little osteoporosis going on and I wasn't taking enough um, calcium and vitamin D3. So I've started on that. Also, I have thyroid problems and thyroid is right here. Okay. I have a little swelling right here. So they started me on thyroid medicine too. I have an overactive thyroid, which is hyperthyroid. My dad has hypo, so it's hereditary. Um, mm. I'm asking for, for some prayers, you know, that I'm going for a scan on my thyroid and my neck um, this week coming Friday. Um, I'm a little nervous because I'm not one to um, do medical stuff, but... I'm 60, so I have to, I have to start anyway. Um, thanks for listening. I hope Thank everyone's you. well and love to all. Thank you, Christina. And, and uh, I have a feeling if, if you were to ask people to raise their hands about how crazy they are to go, uh, go to the doctor, you'd see nothing but hands. At least certainly in my square, you, you would see nothing but a hand. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, anybody else got something to just check in and let the whole community know about? It's like I have some. Yeah, Lance. So this week we had to put down our dog, Ellis. And Ellis was a golden retriever. And Ellis never retrieved anything ever. <laughs> But she was a beloved dog and she, it, it's, it's, we miss her very much. We love our animals. 
And I did have to let Debbie know during the week because Debbie has a dog who I adore as well. And her dog is, reminds me so much of Ellis that they're, they could, they've got to have some kind of relations, but um, it's hard. Um, and uh, just uh, so everyone knows we have on, you can't see her, but Barbara um, Blodgett, who is a friend of ours and um, has been active with Faithways for a long time. And she had a slip on the ice this past week, but the blessing is, is that she's joining us today and Barbara has a great spirit. And uh, so let's hold her in prayer. Um, yeah, so thanks, Chris. Thank you, Lance. Thank you for that, Lance. You're welcome. Anybody else have anything? I just would like to say good morning and it's good to see all of you. Uh, welcome uh, to Faithways. It's good to be here with everybody. All the richer for you and for each one of us. Bev? Yeah, Bev. Sorry about that. Last week I told you my daughter Kate had slipped on the ice and broken her leg badly. Uh, uh, but, and but. I am up here in Vermont with her and her husband now in, a, in the snow with beautiful trees and mountains. And uh, Kate is, they are both such good sports. She's sitting with her leg all wrapped and bandaged up. And, uh, and we are reading and looking at the Olympics and, but she's getting good report. And the end of this week, she's going, she'll see a doctor and see more what, what her timing is with all of this getting better. So I'm in Vermont with them until Friday, which is really wonderful. We haven't spent that kind of quality time and her husband Jake can go ski, which is his passion. So we're just having a really nice mother-daughter time in the midst of it all. So I thank you for your prayers. Keep them going for Kate's well-being. And uh, and I think Zoom is such a wonderful thing because I can see you from Vermont. I can see Nat from, <laughs> from Washington. I can see you all from wherever you are. And um, peace. Hey. <laughs> Thank you, Bev. It's, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, redemption uh, isn't that, uh, that nothing bad happened. It's that something bad did happen. And out of that comes new life and hope and yeah, opportunities. Right. It's, it's really, th there's a moment of the miracle. You are correct. Thank you. Anybody else? Dio. Good morning, everybody. Um, just thanking God for my life, health, and strength, um, for my wonderful family, for this wonderful church that we have. Um, we had earlier, mm -hmm. and I had been talking about the flood that we had in the house. Um, God blessed us. Um, insurance came through. So we'll be able to take care of that issue. We're just waiting to take care of the other issue at my daughter's house, but I'm pretty sure God is a timely God and it'll happen when it's supposed to happen. Um, I was able to spend time with my wife away from all the madness. We went, we just came home just in time for church. Yay. Uh, we went to uh, see a Daughtry concert um, last night at Mohegan Sun and it was awesome just to sit back and just for a few minutes to listen to some good music and be with my wife mm. it, was, it was an awesome time so that's my news fantastic all, all those real estate all those real estate challenges are are coming uh coming through it's so it's so wonderful to hear that uh shana Yes, um, I just like to share that we lost our dog, uh, Ellis, of 13 years, and oh, no. she was a great member of our family, and we miss her very much. Thank you. 
Aww. I think this is this is a very animal sensitive community, uh, and and having just acquired two cats uh, and thinking how important could an animal be, boy have I learned have I learned how important uh, they are. So we will remember <laughs> you and Ellis. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Also, Jan has her hand up, Chris. Oh, Jan. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Hey, I just arrived home last night from spending a week in Ohio with my sister for the funeral of my niece. And the whole family got together and it was as beautiful as beautiful can be. And little sweet Jessica had over 150 people show up for her service. And it was beyond, beyond. I did do a reading and I did a poem and I think it was a little bit beyond their um, scope, but it wasn't beyond Jessica's scope. And um, we ended up getting my brother John two puppies and it was a miracle beyond miracles to have these puppies show up in his life. And then he got to drive back to upstate New York with two puppies oh. because he lost all three of his dogs. And Shane, I'm so sorry about Ellis. The last time I was with her, I kind of had that thought that I may not see her again. And I'm so sorry, honey. Anyhow, I'm home. I'm happy. I am so blessed to live where I live and that we have the healthy consciousness that we have. And I'm just asking for prayers for my little sister, Julie, and her daughter, Heather, who both are obese. And her daughter, Jessica, died with complications from a heart attack from the morbid obesity. So it's a huge issue and love and support to Julie to get through this time. And Thank God you, bless Jen. us all. Let's all stay healthy. Let's all take care of our health. <laughs> Let's do those doctor visits. Yeah, they're yeah. hard, but we need to make them. We got to do it. We yeah. got to do it. God that, bless us all. And thank you for being with me last week because you all were there with me. Well, we, we were feeling your presence in that whole family. And, and uh, I would just say, you know, uh, the, the wonderful thing is that you're feeling beyond. You can't be beyond. <laughs> you're where you needed to be, too, even if others are sort of figuring out how to get from this side of the grave to the next. So thank you. Anybody else? Lance? Yes. Lance? Yes, Barbara, go ahead. I had a question for you. Uh, a couple weeks ago, you were having a conversation at church in the kitchen, and the subject of, um, I guess, uh, kids or something came up, and, and I asked you about it, and you, and you said it was a horse. Were you talking about Miss Kitty? Is Miss Kitty the pony that you were expecting? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So we had we had Miss Kitty. I don't recall that conversation <laughs> in particular, but yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Miss Kitty. Well, I very thought about healthy. it afterwards. Miss Kitty is very healthy right now. So <laughs> she's very what? She's very healthy. healthy? Yeah. Oh, healthy. Yeah. Well, let's healthy. hope she stays that way. Yeah, she will. Yeah. Jane, you must have been happy when she came along. <laughs> I know you were excited when you told me about it. She's giving you thumbs up, Barbara. Yeah, right. good. My prayers are for you, my dear. Thank you, Barbara. Blessings. You're welcome. So uh, I think uh, we're ready for a song, Joseph. Are you ready for us? In your studio. <laughs> yes, I am. I have the, my pictures here, but my camera is here. <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> Let's try something a little challenging today. As I was explaining when I got on, I have a, a new webcasting setup here with lights and microphones and a new camera. So hopefully I get a little better quality. Hmm. Children crying, no one love, one heart. Give thanks and praise to the Lord, and I will feel all right. Oh, let's get together and feel all right. Let them all pass their dirty remarks. 
There is only one question I'd really love to ask. Is there a place for a lady, hopeless sinner who has hurt himself and all mankind? Let me hear you now. One love, one heart. Let's get together and feel all right. All give thanks and praise to the Lord and we will feel all right. <laughs> Thank you, Joseph, as we like always. The, we like the lighting. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks. Uh, oh, go ahead, Chris. No, no, that, that, that's fine. Yeah. I always, you know, I, I, whenever I hear a musician, I think, you know, how incapable I am of doing anything musical. I think I just got stuck with words. What a, what a, maybe in the next life, uh, I'm going to be a brilliant musician, but it, there is a way that, that music just moves the heart and opens one to, to all the possibilities of life. Thank you. Um, so we are, uh, just, just a, a brief word of assurance. It, uh, I found a prayer that, that I think fits, fits the bill. Oh God, give me strength when I'm weak. Love when I feel forsaken. Courage when I'm afraid. Wisdom when I feel foolish, comfort when I'm alone, hope when I feel rejected, and peace when I'm in turmoil. Amen. Thank you, Chris. Well, I want to introduce Tim, who's patiently, or he's with us, which he's, <laughs> he's been with us many times, not always on camera. We're, we're, we're shuffling around. Uh, things here, but uh, Tim is going to lead us in our scripture today. Good morning, everyone. Today's scripture reading morning, is, taken, Tim. is taken from the Gospel of John, from John 17, verses 20 through 26. Hear this message from the Gospel of John, where Jesus is praying to God for his disciples and for all of us. I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who ever believe in me through their message. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. I am in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. Father, I want these whom you have given me to be with me where I am. Then they can see all the glory you gave me because you loved me even before the world began. O oh, righteous Father, the world doesn't know you, but I do, and these disciples know that you sent me. I have revealed you to them, and I will continue to do so. Then your love for me will be in them, and I will be in them. Amen. Hey Amen. Thank you, Tim, very much. And um, this is actually one of my favorite subjects uh, for uh, this. And it, it kind of struck me last Sunday, my brother John brought up uh, the power of prayer for him. And he talked about taking some troubled times and using prayer to turn around the story for him. And it was, it was a nice message that he shared with us and we love it and later uh after this we'll have time for others to share as well and chris reminded us in his devotional which was wonderful this week and it was actually in, i found it inspirational that um you know we see things differently and we you know we can see miracles differently and we come to prayer differently as well and um and so it, it was a really important message and it helped remind me and bring me to this point where I felt that um, today was a day to share about prayer. When we think of Jesus, we think of someone who's already pretty well connected, right? I mean, Jesus and God already have this great relationship. And um, Jesus is a mighty, powerful person. He's a, you know, he's a healer of amazing, uh, 
abilities. Um, he is a phenomenal teacher. He is a, a faith leader. Um, and so we see him as being a very, in some ways, very powerful. And yet many times in the Bible, what we really see Jesus doing is going to pray, going to be with God and going to that place. And it's a place that for my own journey has been, I can't speak as how important it's been for me in my life. Um, I, I would say that my own spiritual life, my own spiritual journey is, is rooted in prayer and founded in prayer. In fact, I would say there's nothing that I do without praying about it. And, and um, you know, there's times when I'm not praying, but um, the things that, that get me through are always accomplished that way. And so um, I feel like at all the turning points in my life, prayer has kind of been at the center of that. For many years, I don't think people knew I prayed very much because it's it's always been sort of, you know, internal and very unstructured and this and that. But today I wanted to share sort of three points about prayer that I think are really important. And the first point is that prayer is very powerful. It's a gift given to us, uh, taught to us by Jesus. And that I believe prayer should be at the core of our of our of our practice. Prayer should be at the core of our spiritual practice. The second thing about prayer is that prayer is reaching out. Prayer is a connecting with God. And, and how we pray is, is probably way less important than what is in our hearts when we pray and, and doing that. And we're going to see, I think, today that there's many different ways to, to pray. And I think the third point, I think this one's important, is that prayer is always an act of humility. For us to authentically pray, we have to come knowing that we are not God, or at least trying to understand that we are not God, admitting that we need God, and understanding that God is the solution to all of our problems, all of the things that make us uncomfortable, all of the fears that we drag around, all of the envy, all of the, the things that stand in our way. The solution is God. The solution comes through prayer. And I think that's a position of humility. Um, as, a, as, a street, as, I, as I became a street minister a, a little over 10 years ago, you know, the, the natural tendency was people would come to me with their problems. And then I would say, well, huh, you know, geez, you need housing. Uh, you know, let's go figure that out. Or, or, oh, you need some money to take a bus somewhere. Or, oh, it was always like this kind of earthly problem solving that we tend to go to. But I think kind of early on, I realized that I was pretty ineffective with that. That, that just wasn't helping anyone. And in some ways, it was sort of superficial. And that the only thing, the only tool in my toolbox as a pastor was prayer, was to offer prayer for people. And when I did that, you could see the change. This is why when John talked about prayer last week, it, it struck me because, it, because the results of prayer often happen immediately. And praying with others is an example. I've seen it so many times. I've witnessed this of how important it really is. Prayer is super powerful. And, you know, last week hearing John was an example, but, you know, there's so many examples throughout the world. There's so much evidence of this. It's really, it's one of those things. I speak to anyone who has, has been in recovery, anyone who has overcome um, an ism or, uh, or some kind of recovery issue, anyone who's worked their way through um, high anxiety or high fear or some of these other things. And what you'll find at the center, at the core of that recovery is prayer almost every time. It was actually, Chris and I didn't talk about him using the serenity prayer today, but there are millions upon millions of people who have who the serenity prayer has has been the foundation of their turnaround in their life and they're coming to God in that way. Prayer is an important tool for recovery. So what does prayer look like? Well, you know, we know anyone that has a cell phone knows that prayer looks like this. It's two hands together and fingers pointed up to the sky and that's prayer. 
And, you know, uh, but, but of course, that's just one, one way of looking at it. And when we see it, we know what that is. I think some of us get frustrated because prayer can be trivialized as well. And, it, and it, where it should be sort of exalted a little bit, but, um, but that's okay. It's good that we have that meme and, and I'm glad and keep using it. Uh, Thomas Keating, uh, I, I took a quote from him um, and it's, quote, Jesus teaches that God is closer than we are to ourselves. Interesting, right? Closer than breathing, closer than thinking, closer than choosing, closer than consciousness itself, unquote. How powerful is that? That God knows this. God knows us. God is there for us. So it's kind of on us to turn around and acknowledge that and bring that in. Jesus teaches that when we pray not to God, uh, that, oh, I'm sorry, this is continues on to the quote. This is a continue of his quote. Uh, Jesus teaches that when we pray, we are to pray to Abba, not to the God of armies or to the God of strict justice or to the God who is leaning over us like the most tender of parents, unquote. And I would go on to say that it's not the God of who's going to win the Super Bowl. It's not the God who's going to uh, pad our bank accounts or keep our job secure or the, or the God that's going to help our dog survive. It's the God that is there with us all the time. And prayer can be formal. And I have learned formal prayers that I myself use. Um, you know, I've used Psalm 23. I use this. I, I like the serenity prayer. I like the Lord's prayer, all of these things. Um, but also prayer can be uh, very informal. And I was talking to Shana the other day and I was saying, you know, my mom writes me letters every week, which she does. Thank you, mom, for that. And Shana said, you know, when your mom writes you letters, it's her prayer. Very interesting and true. Uh, and I think that that was a conversation that they had. How important is that? Always praying, always putting that. So prayer is also something that can be done without words, right? It can be a letter with words, or it can be a dance. It can be a certain type of eye contact, but it's always with God in there. Always reminding that God is the solution that God is there for all the problems of the world. Um, I've seen uh, prayer be a, a, a visit to someone who's not doing well. It can be a phone call to someone. It can just be a simple loving thought. It's just that easy. So, you know, hopefully you have something like that as a practice for you in your life. Um, we've done prayer as dance, and we've done prayer as coming together in community. In other words, there's not just one way to define prayer. And if you're doing it, you're probably already doing it just right. So I'm not going to try to change things that way. Um, the words we use, again, I'll reemphasize this. The words that we use in prayer are less important than what is in our hearts. I've made complete messes of prayers when I'm in hospitals with families in very difficult situations when I was doing my CPA, a CPE, completely botched up prayers, but it didn't matter. It didn't matter because what mattered was that I was there with them, that God was coming into that, that God's presence was part of that. And that's the only thing that mattered. It wasn't the words. No one's ever you know, chastise me for forgetting the Lord's prayer, although it happens every once in a while. Friends, prayer is an act of humility. In prayer, we acknowledge a power greater than ourselves. And it's, it is different to admit. It's, we're, it's not easy for all of us to admit that we don't, we can't do it all. The attitude that we sometimes have can actually be destructive. When we think that we're in charge, when we think, think that everything relies on us to get it just right, it can be very destructive. And you know, for some people, it can actually make them sick. And I was speaking just this week with someone who was saying they felt like they had everything on their shoulders and they just felt completely out of control, which I'm not surprised about. 
and they felt it was really hard to hold it all together. Those were the words being used. This is falseness. This is not true. And when we do this, and we do it, I do it, <laughs> but when I do it, or when you do it, or when others do it, it keeps us from connecting. It keeps us from that deep connection with God that's so important to us. And so if you find this happening to you, if you feel like everything's on you and all the responsibilities are on you and you have to do it all just right, I invite you to pray. Take a deep breath. Use your prayer, whatever it is. Connect with God. That will help you. Prayer is a practice that connects us with the spirit of the universe, God. And there's a term for that connection. And the term is relationship. Prayer brings us into relationship with God. Prayer is a liberation from the notion that we're in control. We like to think it, but prayer liberates us, unleashes us from that idea. And it helps us to accept the divine peace that comes from that connection with God. Friends, God's door is always open. God is always listening. God knows us. And it's true that God knows what's in our hearts. Like we don't have to speak our prayers. God knows. But it's a good practice to do it anyway. It's healthy for us. The idea that we reach out in prayer is for us. It helps us that way with that connection. And it helps us to not forget who we are. And it helps to remind us that we are children of God. I totally encourage this. We too easily begin. It's always on us to fix everything, but that's impossible. And prayer helps us to let go of the control thinking and to, to get rid of our fears and to lead us into a deeper connection with the most powerful and loving God of creation, our God. Friends, let us pray. Dear God, we turn our will and our lives over to you that we may be made whole in your name. Amen. Thank you, friends. God bless you. And so we come to a time, uh, you know, we have time for a song. Andrew, uh, Joseph, Andrew, you're, you're available. Sure, I can put something together. Great message, Lance. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. I didn't get unmuted fast enough. Thank you for that wonderful reflection. And I, and I, and I realize that our time is always limited, but <clears throat> my guess is that, um, that, that there are some folks who might have a, a response to, to that sort of moving reflection about, about prayer. And, and I invite you, if we can just for a couple of minutes, maybe two or three minutes, um, uh, if anybody has any sort of experience with prayer that they would like to share or some observation that, that, that they might make about prayer in their lives, um, it would be great to hear from you. And we'll begin with Joseph. Oh, yeah, I love this is my favorite topic. Lance, that was so beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Um, so I'm a really big fan of when Jesus says, if thine eye be single. Because I'm always thinking about how Jesus would have interpreted that. Um, what we're talking about there, in my opinion, and several other scholars' opinion, is meditation. Is that when our eye is single, we're talking about the third eye. And how we get to a single eye is we close our eyes. 
And when we close our eyes, we go inside. And when we go inside, everything else outside kind of fades away. And we're talking about our inner state. So when I'm praying, I make sure I close my eyes. I take three deep breaths. And even if I'm just having in a casual, informal, friend-to-friend -friend conversation with uh, God or spirit, uh, it's so important to just kind of close your eyes and take three deep breaths and kind of go inside and focus on what you're feeling and uh, let that feeling out and have that conversation. Thank you, Lance. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you, Joseph. Our, our friend, our great friend from Cathedral in the Light, um, Armin Pru, now 91 years old, loved to talk about porosity, thing that, that, life is porous that there that it's it's not it's not there there aren't walls there are openings between walls and um and uh, and meditation is clearly you know one of those great great tools and ways of recognizing how life is just porous um anybody else Wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you, uh, everybody, for that. Um, yeah, I was going um, to say something. Yeah, please so, do. Uh, I, uh, my experience with one prayer is a, an important one, uh, because when I wake up in the morning, I feel I just want to stay in bed. I don't want to get up, but I have two cats that remind me that they're hungry. And I think, well, I really got to get up and feed them, but I don't know how I can. I want to stay in bed. But I have a, a prayer from the Book of Common Prayer uh, that begins, uh, make me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving grace and uh, and I forgot the last time, but when I'm on the way from my bedroom, in by the time I get to the kitchen, I come to that last line, and uh, suddenly I find I can get up and I can feed those hungry cats, and I don't have to go back to bed. And the the word spirit uh, seems to me is so important to think about. I was in danger of losing my spirit, uh, but it came back with the help of that prayer. That's it. Thank you, Mom. So anyone who says prayer doesn't do anything um, needs to be a cat waiting to be fed because <laughs> prayer, prayer does change things. We, our behaviors change, our hopes change, our vision about what what's what's laid out for the rest of the day all of those things change um by prayer thanks thank you um can i uh, can i add yes can i add something this is barbara Absolutely. yep this this prayer was uh, sent to me through the mail from a friend and she says uh encloses the prayer i say works every time sometimes temporarily and it goes like this eternal father I ask you, in the name of Jesus, makes me cry. Uh, I ask you, in the name of Jesus, your dearly beloved son, and with complete belief in his words, that whatever we ask you in his name, you will, you will grant us to please so please grant, and then you name what you want to pray about, and then you say, whatever we ask you, unless it's contrary to your holy will. Wonderful. No, Thank I'm not you. done. Okay. Not, I got, no, I'm not done. You yeah. will grant us, you will grant us, please, and to thank you for granting this request. I always get kind of teary when I get into things like this, but that prayer pretty much says he'll do whatever, whatever we ask him if it's not contrary to what his will is, is in the first place. So that was the prayer she sent to me. Great. Thank you, Barbara. You're welcome. 
so right. Lance, I think we move to uh, to move from prayer to prayer. I think Dio had one last thing. Oh, Dio, sorry. Dio. Um, I just, I have a song, but whenever you guys tell me you would like me to do that, but I wanted to say that prayer is hope. Prayer means life. Prayer means a new beginning. Prayers can turn something into a can't situation to a can situation. Prayer can change a negative into a positive. It can turn your frown upside down. Prayers can do so many things you can just come into a door where the whole aura just changes. And one minute you're, you're sad and the next minute you're happy and you're smiling and you're jolly, just like the faces here on this screen. It's like prayer just does so many things, but we have to remember that it's hope because hope brings about prayer. Amen. Thank you, Dio. And we, we do, we will have a song uh, coming up from Dio short, uh, not too long. Um, wow. And if I can I, just be so bold as to say that uh, Dio just gave us a prayer. So if we want to know how to pray, that's, that is a way to pray. And, and uh, our frowns have been turned upside down. Thank you. Amen. Yeah. So <sighs> take a deep breath, friends. And as we enter into prayer, we know that uh, we can do this together. Oh God, you have heard our prayers. You have heard our sharing. You have heard our pleas to you to be with those who need you. Glenn, who's going through chemo as a young child. Julie and Heather, God, we ask for their health for their ability to um, recover from the ills that they have. For Christina and her work that she's doing to get better and for her, uh, her ills as well. God be with Barbara and her recovery and God be with Barbara's hairdresser so that we can get the right curls going. <laughs> God, we ask you to be with our beloved Ellis and, and our family and friends in our loss. God, we ask you to be with Kate and her recovery. We know that there's a blessing in there of her being with Bev and, and up there with her daughter up in Vermont. God, be with Shana and her continued recovery from COVID and all those who suffer from COVID and especially those who have uh, long-term aspects of COVID that can be really difficult. God, we ask you to be with my brother, John, um, this week as, uh, as he works to close on his housing. God, we ask you to be with brother Matt Thuin. And God, we ask prayers for Linda as well. And God, there are so many prayers Many of those that are too difficult to share with you, but we ask you to be in our souls and in our hearts to hear our prayers. And God, we give thanks for your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, who taught us to be healers, who taught us to love humanity, who taught us to love all creation in your name. Hear us now, God, as we Unmute ourselves today for our messy Lord's Prayer in your name, as Jesus taught. Friends, I invite you to unmute. And uh, today I'm going to invite us all to kind of close, you know, close our eyes as we go through our messy Lord's Prayer. Let us begin.
Hey. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven. hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thy will be done. As it is in heaven, they are daily bread. Give us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. 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 <laughs> I just love that. Now I'll ask, I'm going to uh, mute everyone again, just to uh, help us out here a little bit. Hopefully you understand that uh, you're welcome to uh, still speak up. We will unmute you. Um, so, and Jesus brought his disciples together for his meal. And when he began communion, he began it with a prayer. He began it asking God to bring God's holiness and sacredness throughout this meal. And today we ask God to do the same. God, we ask you to bring your sacredness and holiness throughout this service. God, we ask you to bring your sacredness and holiness throughout our lives. God, we ask you to bring your sacredness and holiness throughout the lives of all people, even those who we don't particularly care for. Amen. And Jesus knew what he was doing. And some people say that, you know, Jesus brought his friends up to the room, but, you know, I don't know that they were all friends. They were called to be disciples. So it was a little bit of a different thing. It wasn't it wasn't necessarily a buddy-buddy thing. It was a call to be close to God together. And though as I look out into our group, and you know, we're a little smaller today, but we often have more, what I realize is that we become friends, but really we're called to serve. We're really called to be part and to be connected with God this way. And so uh, after blessing the bread. Jesus then broke it and gave it to his disciples. And in the same way, Jesus took the fruit of the vine, becoming the covenant between Jesus and God, between ourselves and our holy maker. He poured it out, once again blessed it, and say, take this. In remembrance of me, this is my sacrifice, my body and my blood. And today I offer the sacraments of communion, the body and blood of Christ. Let us pray. Oh, dear God, with open hearts, we give full thanks to you. We are thankful for all that you have laid before us. We are thankful for your light and for your love and caring. Please be there for us when we are praying and be there for us when we forget to pray. And be there for us as a community and remind us even when we are alone that all we need to do is reached to you, and you were always there. We thank you for this, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, friends. And you know, we come to our, our offering, and um, we are thinking of different ways that faith ways can be a mission for the world or for other people. Um, it's been a sort of a strange year because last year we had several um, winter warmups and we're going to have some this, this year, but um, because of the strange COVID and then the weather, it's 50 degrees and we've got all these, you know, warm clothing to give away, uh, but we will be doing that. 
Um, but we do it as a community. I believe that there is a gift to us in being the givers. And so let's think about our, what ways that we can be more, be generous and doing it in God's name. Let us pray. Oh God, accept us as your gifts. Let us give to you and to yours throughout your world and throughout creation, as well as we are able to give more in loving and caring way for your world. Amen. Thank you, friends. And Dio, did you just, <laughs> do you have a song? Yep. Yes, I do. Um, I, want, I was, it's funny, um, earlier today, I was thinking, you know, it kind of all messes together. We're talking about prayer and the song that I actually had was something of a prayer, or at least that I look at it that way. Um, so I, I feel like it fits, um, is a combination of two songs, um, of pass me not and thank you, Lord. I'm asking that we all, um, dear hearts, just gather our wandering minds Whatever message you want God to hear from you, put it at your forefront, your heart. And when I sing, just listen to the words and just let God just capture the words and capture your heart and capture your feelings. And whatever is going on in your life, it will be so because we will believe in it. God will hear it and it will be so. Pass me not, oh gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. Why others that are calling? Do not pass me by, oh, Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry, why others thou art called? Only do not pass me by. I wanna thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I wanna thank you, thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Dio. Now comes our time for the benediction, but again, I think uh, Dio's already given it to us, but let me uh, offer this. Um, as a, as a prayer to us um, as we go go forth from, from this moment into uh, the rest of Sunday and into the week. Um, I invite you obviously to, st to stay on afterward if you'd like to, but, um, but I, I, uh, I hope this, this gives us a, another kind of send off um, to go out into the world. I leave you now with this prayer that the Lord Jesus will reveal himself to each one of us, that he will give us the strength to go out into the world in hope, that he will show us that he alone can fulfill our hearts. Accept Jesus's freedom and embrace his truth and be messengers of the certainty that we have been truly liberated through the death and resurrection of our Lord. 
This will be the new experience, the powerful experience that will generate through us a more just society and a better world. God bless us and may the joy of Jesus be always with us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Guys. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Joseph, do you want to do is anybody want to do another song or I don't know what time it is. Well, well <laughs> it's 11 <laughs> We like your new studio, by the way. You're getting a lot of compliments. Is it me? Is it me? It is you. It is me. Um, yeah, I was going to do a Valentine's Day song. I mean, God is love, right? I don't know what to do. I don't know. I'm looking at you, but now I'm looking at you. <laughs> ah, what a character. world needs now is love sweet love it's the only thing that there's just too little of the world needs now is love sweet love no not just for some but for everyone oh lord we don't need another mountain there are mountains enough and hillsides enough to climb. There are oceans, there are rivers, enough to last till the end of time. Cause what the world needs now, there it is, is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little of. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the no, not just for some, but for everyone. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right, Andrew, Dio, for your music. Thank you, Chris, for our wonderful leadership today and that great uh, devotional. And uh, Betsy, for our prayer today and everyone for sharing great sharing christina you can unmute now yeah for sure and I did. I yeah. did. um it's good to see everyone if, just a reminder we're a cooperative ministry so if anybody wants to uh you, you can preach you can uh, read scripture you can sing a song or play something or um anything that you want to share a prayer or a poem um it's it's great so we would love to hear have the, the more the merrier but. god bless everybody i'll see y'all next week peace, yeah, you know, peace, well, peace. mom and dab it looks good but mom i can't hear you still <laughs> uh <laughs> Hello? Like you know Mom, I can't hear you. I'll call you later. <laughs> I'm going to mail you a computer. <laughs> uh, but, well, peace, one and all. God bless you. Peace be with everyone. Have a wonderful week. Hi, you're all my guinea pigs now. Barbara, unfortunately, I muted you, and I don't know if you know how to unmute. Is there a way to unmute from her? Yes, yeah, no different. You can you can send her a message that says please unmute or something. I don't think you can. She's on a telephone. It, it's same thing. Okay. Bye. Oh, she's on the.